Your your mom? You what, what does your mom do? Oh, she drinks gravy ever, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <sighs> so what do you? That's not a problem. Oh, is she going to the hospital for it? Oh, she is. She's going to the hospital for it. So what do you want from me? What? Nothing. Do nothing about it. So what? Your people around you have health complications, and you think you want to talk to them about it? No. Don't do that. Never do that. Because it's not appropriate, guys. Don't talk about people that have problems. <laughs> what do you do then? Nothing. You do nothing. Let them die, I guess. They just die. And that's just what it is. So, like, what do I do then? Like, if my husband just, he just thinks that he's good, even though his leg fell off two days ago, and he's an alcoholic, and he's just, I don't know. Like, what am I supposed to do? Nothing, huh? Mm. Okay. So, like, so, like, he's going to die right he, he's dead he's gonna die in like four days if that's the case. so like just nothing oh okay that's some pretty sound medical advice i just want to say that if you're a fat person you are not a failed thin person you are not like a, there's not a thin person inside of you that's dying to come out if anything you're dying while you're inside the unhealthy body this idea of not being a thin person I like to think about it like that like you don't have to be fat it is very quite possibly for you to be thin and you're not just a fat girl or a fat guy if you don't want to be and the fact that you just define yourself as I'm a fat guy I'm a fat girl is actually very depressing I don't know why you would ever define yourself as that it's <laughs> it seems quite depressing but if that's how you want to represent yourself that's fine. That's okay. I want to just compliment her real quick on these fuzzy balls that she has hanging from her ears. I actually like these ones. I like these ones a lot. And I also want to comment on her hairline. Very nice hairline. Beautiful, beautiful hairline. Awesome hairline. Nice lips. I like the teeth. I like when people have actual, like, real-world teeth, you know? I'm not shitting on you if you got braces. I'm not. I knew a guy that got braces, and he got them before he was 18 years old, and when he went to the doctor he had skipped the date right like he was like oh i'm gonna get him off this date but he just didn't go that day he had to reschedule or something happened i don't know and when he he, he he rescheduled it later on and that later on day he had turned 18 and then when he went to go get the braces off he went there and they were like ah yeah your health insurance would cover this if you were under 18 and i know that was like a week and a half ago but because you're 18 now we can't do nothing about it. We, it's just what it is. You're just going to have to keep these on your teeth for the rest of your life. And he went home and took a knife <laughs> and scraped them off his teeth. Luckily, his teeth turned out fine. He's a good-looking man, beautiful-looking man, Arabian man, man from the Middle East, looks great, has great hair, smells really good, too. Good-looking dude. Very good-looking dude. Anyway. Nobody owes anybody health. Unless you're talking about your children. I mean, if you have children or family members or friends and people around you that really rely on you, it's a very ignorant statement to say, I don't owe you health. Sure, you don't owe them anything in the sense of like they didn't pay you or like you're not under like a, a form of employment. Sure, but it's such a dumb fucking statement to sit there and go, I don't owe you health looking at your children while you're sitting there eating double Big Mac quarter pounders stuff in your throat like you're a gay man at a BBC, a BBC festival. Your kids are relying on you, right? Your parents, maybe, they're getting older, they're going to rely on you. Maybe you have a husband, maybe you have a wife, somebody that's going to rely on you for the extent of their entire life. What about those people? Do you not, do you not look at those people as somebody that potentially you owe to be healthy or at least not have as many health complications as you as you do now because I always like to look at it as if you have kids perhaps you should probably keep yourself as healthy as you possibly can not just for yourself no 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 but for your children so they don't have to take care of you as you get older you understand now granted if you do have to take care of them when you're older it's not like it's a bad thing it happens shit happens but if you're doing it purposefully why the fuck are you doing that that's like somebody taking out perpetual debt when they're when they're an adult when they're an adult and they have kids and they have student loans that they're never going to pay off they don't have a 401k they don't have any retirement plans nothing and then you get to adulthood you have kids right and then those kids have to take care of you financially speaking because you didn't give a fuck about yourself in your earlier 20s and how many people do you meet throughout your day months years of being on this planet and these people go i'm not making it to 30 i don't give a fuck I'm, my life is like, I'm going to live until I'm 30 and that's that. And then they make it to 30 and they're like, well, 
I'm okay right now. I guess I'll keep going. And it always works like that. I've never seen somebody make it to 30 and go, okay, bye. Nobody's seen, nobody, I've never seen that. Unless you're Kurt Cobain, of course, right? But that's like a different scenario. Most people that make it to 30, they're going to keep going. And the thing is, you didn't do shit for your 20s. You didn't build up any money. And don't get me wrong. There's always time, right? There's always time to build up money. So that way when your kids like become adults, they don't have to like take care of you and shit like that. But I always see people do this shit where they go, I'm not going to live till 30. I'm not going to live till 40. So like, what do I have to build a 401k? Why do I have to worry about my future? I don't give a fuck. And then they hit these ages and then they're, they have, they're fucked. And then they go, well, I guess I'll keep going. Well, wouldn't you know all those people that told you that you're going to make it to 30 and 40, you're going to be fine. We're right. And you just didn't do anything. So it's always better to err on the side of caution and just save a little bit of money on the side. Or in this, in this particular scenario, eat less. I don't even know why the fuck I'm even saying that. Like, you know, finances are all, like a bajillion times more chaotic to take care of than your actual health. At least for your health, all you're really doing is just walking more and eating a little bit less every once in a while. You know, that's all I'm asking for. That's all your kids are asking for. That's all your parents are asking for. Just a little bit, (laughs) a little bit of accountability. A little bit of, I don't need to eat this double chocolate frosted flake donut right now. I don't have to eat like five of them. I'll just have one. That's all I'm asking. And that's all they're asking for either. But that statement, it is annoying to no, is annoying to no end with me. You don't owe anybody your help is such a dumbass statement because it ignores the fundamental idea that people around you don't think of you as like a person that they need around, right? Like you're all these people around you. Anyway, whatever. Trying to come out. Nobody owes anybody health. There are people in this world that will never be able to fit the westernized standards and values of health. That's true. Sure. Uh, it, sure. But like, is that really the metric at which we are judging people by health? Just because you'll never be able to reach 100% health capacity that you should never, ever achieve more health? What kind of dumbass statement is that? It's like somebody going like, oh... Just because you can't make all the money, does you can't make all the money, therefore you should make no money at all. Are you fucking dumb? More money is obviously better than no money, right? You have no money, therefore you're just fucked perpetually and you have to suck off guys to get like, I don't even know, like get like turkey sandwiches at, at a fucking stop and shop. I have stop and shops, okay? We don't, where I'm from, stop and shop. That's what we got, okay? Then we got stop and shop and, and star market. That's what we got, okay? I live on the East Coast, okay? So you're gonna suck guys off for a turkey sub? Outside of star market? No, you're not fucking doing that. No, you're going to make money and hopefully you make enough money to support yourself and people around you in the same way that you become healthy enough to support yourself and people around you. So other people don't have to worry about you. You understand? Kind of crazy how that works, huh? You don't have to worry. People don't have to worry about you, huh? Isn't that crazy to say? Say that, huh? Oh, wow. I can't believe this is like such a nuanced topic to say. It's like, oh, wow, the westernized values of health. What are you talking about? The westernized values of health. We're literally just asking you to not be in the doctors like every other fucking week because of something that you did to yourself. That's all we're asking, dude. I'm sorry that walking more is like a westernized standard. Don't like most countries in the East, not even, they don't even know what cars are, right? Like you go over these westernized countries and they look at you, right? And they're like, what is a booster shot? What are you talking about? I, yeah, I, I was diagnosed with like scoliosis when I was nine, you know? Or like, I don't know, dude, whatever, bro. Tetanus shots and shit like that. Ever, no matter what they do, no matter how many vegetables they eat, no matter how many pounds they lose, no matter how many hot girl walks they take. What is a hot girl walk? Is that when you, what is that? Like, is that when you just go like this? Check me out. I'm so hot today. Oh my God. Check me out, girl. Slay queen edges. Hot girl walk 2024. Let's do it together. Pounds they lose. No matter how many hot girl walks they take. They might never, ever, 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 ever be able to present you a clean bill of health. But nobody's asking for them to have a solid bill of health. Dude, like, why are you going to such extreme measures to try to justify your point? Nobody is, everybody on the planet is not at a 100% capacity of health. But at least you can get healthier. At least you can become physically healthier. Is that, why is that so far-fetched for you? Like, are you really out here trying to tell people because they'll never be the healthiest, they should just never try at all? What kind of shit is that? What are you talking about? It's the worst piece of advice I've heard all day today. Just, oh, because you'll never be healthy, you should, like, don't drink enough, don't drink water. No, don't, just don't drink water. Don't even try to eat healthy, by the way. Just eat that quadruple slice of pizza that you know that you're gonna stack on top of each other and just fold them up and just inhale it into your mouth. 
was terrible advice is not good advice. So, like, what do you want for these people to do? Just perpetually sit down in sedentary lifestyles, just, I don't know, guzzling down thousands of calories a day because they'll never reach 100% of capacity, which nobody ever will reach 100% of capacity. What are you judging this off of? Why do you do anything then? If you're, if you're honestly telling me because somebody could never reach 100% capacity of health and they should, they should never try at all. Why do you do anything in life then? Because you'll never be 100% good at anything, right? Why even buy a car? Because you're never going to be the best at driving a car because I know you're a woman. No, come on, stop. Not, not because she's a woman, okay? I'm sorry, dude, okay? That was a little bit of a joke. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you'll never reach 100% of anything, so why even bother doing anything in life ever? It's such a dumb way of thinking about shit. It doesn't apply in any other way. And those people still deserve to exist without harm. What do you mean by without harm? Like, what, what like, with, without people telling them that they're fat? Is that the harm metric that we're using? Because, like, nobody's out in the street... And, like, I don't know, walking around slapping fat people because they're fat. Like, nobody's doing that. So it's not physical harm, at least not in that way. They might be physically harming themselves with all the pressure they're pushing on their kneecaps and the diabetes and all that other stuff. But what do you mean by harm? Like, if somebody's on the internet and goes, like, oh, you're fucking gross. You're fat. I bet you have to, like, I bet you have to tie a loofah to the end of a stick and, like, scrub out your belly button. Like, it's, a, like, like, like it's a, a, you know what I'm talking about? What are those things called? Uh, those, those meat sticks? You know what I'm talking about, dude? Shish kebab. You have to shish kebab your belly button because it's so incredibly crusted and it has all those amoebas and things such and so forth inside your belly button. Get out of my establishment. They still deserve care. They still deserve empathy. They still deserve respect. For who? Why do you Why do you keep saying they deserve, they deserve, they deserve, they deserve? Why? Why do you think it? Maybe all those other things, like they deserve all that other stuff, but respect from who? Like you can't expect a random person or me or anybody else to respect somebody they don't know. Like it's up to that individual. I mean, you can think that. Do you respect me for having this opinion? Do you think that I deserve all those things? If not, then why not? Why does it apply here and not there? And they don't deserve anybody questioning their health or their ability to be alive. That's kind of, it's, uh, they don't deserve anybody questioning their health is a very, very, very ignorant statement. So like doctors, it's so like people that are literally medical professionals or like people that like have studied this shit for potentially like a decade plus of their life. They shouldn't have the ability to question somebody's health. What about your parents? What about your fucking husband? What about your wife? What about your, a significant other that's concerned with your drug addiction? Like, oh, Jeremy, last night I saw a video of you on, on fucking Pornhub and you were a lot lizard and you were sucking dick so you can get that hit of like Adderall. What's up with that, dude? Why are you on Pornhub? What is going on? You didn't even put it on your own personal, you didn't even put it on your own personal profile. It's somebody else's profile. You're not even making money off of it. What's up with that, Jeremy? Huh? What's going on with that, huh? So, no, you can't question that. You can't question your own husband sucking dick for Adderall at a, at a, at a truck stop. What is going on? You can't do that shit anymore. It's fucked up, man. Uh, what happened to America? This is what I'm talking about. Damn liberals. In addition to that, fat people don't owe you shit. Sure, they don't owe me shit unless they're somebody that I know, right? I, I was so fucking terrible. How can you sit there and say, you, uh, we deserve, we deserve, we deserve, we deserve, and then also say, but, you know, don't expect anything from us because we, we, we fundamentally disagree with all those ideologies and stuff like that. Okay, where do you get the fuck off saying that you deserve all this shit? And then tell me right after that, be like, but don't expect anything in return because uh, I'm entitled and obviously I'm fat as fuck and don't think that I'm going to give you anything in return. Fuck you. Fuck you. Look at my eyes. They're green. Don't ever look at me. They don't. And they will never owe you shit. Can it, can it be the other way around though? Like if you don't owe me anything, can I not owe you any of the stuff that you said that I owe you like a little bit ago? Like didn't you just say that I owe you like four, four or five different things? Like they deserve respect. They deserve care. So like you deserve all that stuff. But then like you just said that you don't owe me anything, right? So why well, don't – so like what do I get then? So like I have to give you all that stuff but then I don't get anything in return? What is the line of credit here? I feel like that we need to have some kind of equal line of cr currency here. If you're, if I'm giving you all this deliciousness, right, all this deliciosoness, and I'm getting nothing in return, I don't know. It just kind of seems like it's not equal, right? It just kind of seems like maybe I'm getting the shit under the stick. Maybe you equal it out a little bit. Maybe we make it fair. We, maybe we talk about that a little bit. No, we don't talk about that. No. Ability to be alive. In addition to that, fat people don't owe you shit. Yep. 
They don't. Okay. And they will never owe you shit. Fat people don't even owe other members of their community shit. I wonder if she ever, like, watched this video back and was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute now. Did I just say, did I just contradict myself in my own video, like, five times? <laughs> what? I can't believe I just did that. Am I dumb? Did I just really do that in my own video? I wonder. And I, I, I'm confident, even if she would ever do that, I don't think she would ever acknowledge anything that she just said as a contradiction, even though she's literally saying, you owe them everything, you owe her everything, but they don't expect anything in return. We don't owe you shit. I, yeah, I did, cool. I mean, even if you watch this back, I'm convinced. I don't think this woman would literally look at that as like any anything of a problem. Okay, so let's just work on being critically conscious. Yeah, yeah critically conscious, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. How, can, can that be reciprocal? Can you look in the mirror when you say that, please? A little bit? Like, you have that little mirror right there on your car, right? You know the one where you look when you look behind you, right? You know the one I'm talking about? The one you go like that? Like, oh, is there a car behind me? Is there a cop behind me? Why don't you look at that one and say, can we be curiously conscious or whatever the fuck she said? And to every fat person out here who is being critically conscious, I love you. Thank you. Uh, I identify as a fat lady today. Period. Period. Slay queen. Look at my eyebrows. Take her. When I was on that BBC show. Oh, 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 oh calm down now. <laughs> That's one way to start off a sentence, dude. What kind of BBCs we talking about? Oh, the British Broadcasting Center. Okay. The, the show producer came to me and was like, "Damn, who is the, who let this who let this elephant in here? Who? I didn't know whales had legs. Oh, oh, you're not a whale. My bad." <laughs> I, I mistook you. I mistook you. Now, she's a beautiful young lady. I love her hair. Looks great. Okay, so so at, at the end of it, we were fin wrapping up filming and, and they came to get my answer on, on something and brought the camera crew and everything. And it was like, okay, so what do the audience do when they have a family member or someone that they love is that's really unhealthy because they're fat? Yeah. Like, how do you tell a fat person to lose weight? You do. You just tell them like that, dude. If you are somebody genuinely health conscious and you're acknowledging somebody, a part of your family that's having health issues, yeah, you should acknowledge it because otherwise these people are never going to get help. If somebody, if it ain't broke, and a lot of times people are not looking at the broke object that they have, then they're never going to fix it. So let's see what she has to say. How do you fix it? I'm very interested. And I was like... Listen up here. Good, good so far. Good so far. You don't. Oh, you don't. Oh, uh, A1, A1, you never talk about any, what do you do, what do you fucking do, what is wrong with you, what the fuck is wrong, you thought that you were gonna, if you had a husband, and he was addicted to sucking big, ginormous BBCs, and you don't like that, what are you talking about, well, he's glazing his mouth up every single night with the sweet delicacy of another man's BBC, and you think that's an issue, what is wrong? No, that's not a problem. Let him suck penis for the rest of his life. You think he's gay? He's not gay. Stop saying that. He's not. Stop talking about it. First of all, you talking about it is like so offensive to me, okay? Oh, your grandmother does crack and you don't think that's a good thing? So fucking suck. Stop being a bitch. Stop being a bitch. First of all, you're a bitch. You're a bitch. Okay? That first and foremost. Any Anyway. Your grandmother doing crack is not a health detriment. It's not, it's, it's, so what? So what? She wants to do it. She wants to do it, dude. It is what it is. She's her own person. Oh, you, your mom, your, your mom, you, what, what does your mom do? Oh, she drinks gravy ever, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? So? What do you, that's not a problem. Oh, is she going to the hospital for it? Oh, she is. She's going to the hospital for it? So? What do you want from me? What? Nothing. Do nothing about it. So what? Your people around you have health complications and you think you want to talk to them about it? No. Don't do that. Never do that. Because it's not appropriate, guys. Don't talk about people that have problems. <laughs> what do you do then? Nothing. You do nothing. Let them die, I guess. They just die. And that's just what it is. These people are going to continuously have those health complications and they're going to pile up, pile up, pile up, pile up. And eventually, you're going to hit a wall and then you die. That's... I don't know. Like, it, it's just pretty fucking morbid. Honestly, it's pretty fucking depressing, dude. It's like, listen up here. You don't. You don't. <laughs> you mind your damn business. Can you imagine telling that to your husband? Can you imagine saying that shit? Like, oh, Jake. Jake, you know, 
I've been really concerned recently about all the problems that you've been having with your health. You can barely walk anymore. You're eating double cheese chocolate-filled donuts every single day. You're running up the bank bill every single month. We don't have any money. You're taking out debt for these Uber Eat deliveries. And he goes, mind your own fucking business, Cheryl. What the fuck you coming at me for? Don't I make the money in this fucking house? No, Jonathan, you don't. We, 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 we haven't, you haven't had a job in two, three years. You, you don't work anymore because you're physically incapable of working. Get the fuck out of my face, Cheryl. I make the money around here. I do what I fucking want. Get the fuck out of here. By the way, there's 14 Uber delivery orders at the door. I had them pre-ordered. Bring in three of them. You don't. So, are you their doctor? <laughs> no? Just shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, dude. How are you ever going to go to the doctor, first of all, if you're never going to approach that person with an actual problem? What the fuck are you talking about right now, dude? What? All right. No, you're not a doctor, first of all. What are you doing? You think you could talk about health to somebody even though you're not a doctor? You're fucking crazy. You're fucking crazy. That, you know what that statement is? So fucking bullshit. That's like somebody coming in, right? And they're bleeding. They have a big cut, a gash. And you go, hey, that's a problem. And they go, what are you, a fucking doctor, dude? No, you're not. So sh hop off my dick. Why don't you put a condom on for all the dick riding you're doing right now? What the fuck is good with you, dude? Get off me. And he's like, oh, okay. Uh, so you have to be a doctor to understand when somebody's going through something? No. You, all right. I didn't know that. I had not known that. Fucking, this woman is obviously uh a medical professional or some kind of professional that can tell you when you can and cannot approach somebody with a concern, I guess. Are you their doctor? No? Mind your damn business. Oh. <sighs> and if you are their doctor, are you able to offer... Uh, evidence-based it's just there's no there's no winning with this woman dude like how you gonna give me the alternative like if you're a doctor you can talk about it but you can't talk about it unless you have evidence how many times you gonna have to preference that like you keep moving the goalposts back like you have to be a doctor to talk about it jk you can't talk about it when you're a doctor you have to have evidence and be a doctor jk you can't be a doctor and have evidence you have to give that person chocolate cream filled donuts too also when you say that don't talk to them about it uh, anyway regardless of what it is too so like what do i do then like if my husband just he just thinks that he's good even though his leg fell off two days ago and he's an alcoholic and he's just i don't know like what am i supposed to do nothing huh mm. okay so like uh, so like he's gonna die right he, he's dead he's gonna die in like four days if that's the so like just nothing Oh, okay. That's some pretty sound medical advice from so that's some pretty, you know, you know, it's interesting. That's some pretty sound medical advice from somebody who's not a doctor. Oh, oh, and doesn't have evidence. Oh, weight neutral care. Shut for, what? Uh, evidence based weight neutral care <laughs> for that person. <laughs> no, then. Maybe you need to educate yourself and mind your damn business if you're gonna be prescribing a diet. Because tell, tell somebody that can tell somebody that's like dying and going like shut the shut your fucking mouth. Don't talk about her like that. All right, she's dying. No, she's not. She's good. Her leg fell off. She's good. I don't work. Um, but then some people say, but 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 but, um, they eat food that I have decided is unhealthy. They yeah. eat food. They eat food and they're fat. Yeah. How do I get them to stop eating food? Right. Well, this is how you do it. Okay. You mind your damn business. It's it's just oh the the advice is so good. Oh my god. Whew. I I was I thought for a second there there was gonna be some new information. No, it was just mind your own business. I can't. You know, huh, I should have knew. I should have knew it should have been mind your own business. I mean, hey. So if your husband is like going to the he's going to the gas station and he's going hey cheryl i'm gonna go fill up and he's going there but he's not bringing his car no he's bringing his mouth he's drinking the gasoline down he guzzled that shit down like my strange addictions he's swallowing up gasoline and he's swallowing up penis behind the gas station get a, the a double entendre the the sweet delectable gasoline and the sweet delectable man juices behind the the counter at the local gas station you don't stop 
So what do you disapp why would you ever disapprove of what Frank, Cheryl, anybody you know has a problem? Dude, look, it's not a, it's not first of all, it's none of your oh, it's your husband? None of your business. None of your business. None of your business. Oh, your kid? None of your business. None of your business. What are you doing? Why do you care? What are you talking about? Stop it. You're a bad person for caring about somebody else. <laughs> yeah, mind your damn business. Period. Ah, uh, shit. Like, period. When I work with people um, in in coaching in my Fierce Fatty Academy, yeah, okay. the amount of stories that I hear f from fat people who say, my family told me, do you really need another helping? Do you really need to eat that? and good good clean eating you know what i'm saying like if you're sitting there at a buffet and you should get in that double quadruple plate and he's like damn i mean that's kind of you sure you want to do that i mean that's kind of a lot of food you sure about that let's see what she has to say about it mind your business or it has really stuck with them and caused trauma that causes trauma like the fact that somebody is telling you that you're eating too much that's going to cause trauma but not but not somebody not somebody not telling you. So, like, if, if you just kept eating, that's not going to cause trauma. If somebody was just body slamming thousands of calories a day, just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that's not going to cause trauma. But you telling them, that's the real trauma. Ugh. For some reason, I just don't, I just don't understand. You're telling me that actions don't speak louder than words? Like, how are we... What do we talk about right now? So you're going to judge more for the person that talks about it rather than the person that's just like, nah, all right. Hey, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I've always been told that actions speak louder than words, right? In the sense of like you should be executing more than somebody telling you, but you can't tell anybody anything in general. So like, fuck you, I guess. And caused all other negative outcomes, which didn't include becoming thin. <laughs> sure. Huh. Yeah, but guess what they did do, huh? They got fat. They got big as fuck, big as shit. And they got all these medical health problems now. And you're just fine with it, I guess. Because guess what? Mind your own business. You're a bitch. Stop, stop trying to help people. You're not going to ever help anybody by helping them. Stop helping them. Right? And so people... I love that this woman is speaking so confidently about it too. Like she's talking about it so condescendingly. She's talking about it in a way that makes it seem like she's demeaning you for making the right decisions. But she doesn't look at the right decisions as the right decisions. She's looking at the right decisions as trauma, as neglect, as badness for you telling another person, especially somebody that's in your family, that they need to lose weight and that stuff is actually bad what they're doing. No, no. That's that's not that's the issue, but not the fact that that person is doing something incredibly harmful to you and everyone else. And to a certain degree, when I hear people say you don't owe somebody health, how do you not owe somebody health when you're talking about somebody that's your husband, wife, fucking child, uh, grandmother, dude? What do you? No one owes anything anybody ever. Okay, All right. I didn't know. Also say, but what? I I've what if I've never seen them exercise? Yeah. They've never exercised in their whole life. Yeah. Well, then should I tell them that they need to exercise? Yeah. And yeah. they need to lose weight? Yeah, I think so. Well, this is what you need to do. Okay, I'm ready. You need to mind oh. your damn business. Oh, I, was, I was not prepared for that one. I, oh, oh, oh. That was hard. That was a big one, dude. I can't believe uh, that one hit me real deep. Um, Damn, I didn't know this whole time that I thought I was helping people out when my friend asked me, David, am I fat? David, do I have a problem with my sleeping habits? David, do I have a problem with my eating my eating schedule? Do I have a problem with this? I'm going to have every time, like, it's not my place, bro. It's not my place to talk about that. Oh, you slept two hours for, like, the last year and a half? It's not my place, honestly. It's not my place. Oh, you're a drug addict? Yeah, it's not my place. I can't really. It's my, my own business. I can't really. Oh, you eat, like, 40,000 calories? It's not my place. I can't really talk about that. It's not really anything I could do about it. It's not really, it's not, you know, you something you got to deal with yourself. It's not, it's not, it shouldn't be. It's actually not even a problem, actually. You're good. You're good. You're probably all right, honestly. Oh, you're, oh, you're, oh, you're actually suffering from a lot of, like, problems because of those things? No, I'm, I'm just going my mouth. It's not, my, it's not my, my fault. It's, I can't do anything about that. Um, who, no, are you the boss of them? Yes. What if you're, like, the mom or dad? Are you not the boss? Like, this is, like, those arguments of, like, when people go, like, oh, if your kid tells you that they're Spider-Man, they're Spider-Man. If your kid tells you that she wants to eat fruit roll-ups for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, your child knows better. Your child knows what his body needs, okay? 
You should be celebrating the beauty of your child. So when your kid comes in and he goes, Bob, I'm like really hungry. And I was thinking that maybe like for a breakfast, lunch, and dinner that you make me fruit roll-ups all the time, all the time, forever. And because I deserve it and my body told me that I need it. And then you go, oh, yes, sweetie, of course, you, my beautiful sweetheart, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you say, even though the calories are going to be through the roof and you're probably going to be pre-diabetic by the time you're eight. And yeah, absolutely, you know what's best for you. Are you dumb? <laughs> are you stupid? <laughs> Kids can't even make their own fucking bed. I can't even make my own fucking bed. Look at this shit. I have maple syrup behind me. And you think that people can make their own decisions? No, they can't, okay? So get the fuck off this high horse of thinking that you don't owe your wife, child, fucking husband, daughter, all these people, you don't owe them health, and you can't decide for them on certain things, or at least bring it up as an issue to them. You just, how can you say any of this stuff so confidently? It's so crazy. Like, they might just not be an exercising yeah, type. Yeah, definitely. But you know what's crazy, though? is Even if you're not the exercising type, you don't have to. That doesn't mean that you're not. It just means you never did it, you know? I didn't know that I was a person that went to the gym until guess what happened? I went to the gym. <laughs> Who would have known? Who would have known? They might exercise when they don't have the prying eyes of someone who's judging them. Beating off. That's what they, that's exercising. On them. Maybe they do other things. Like, who, who maybe they don't. And it doesn't, okay. it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, guys. Stop it. You think that exercising is healthy? It is. You think that eating right foods for you is healthy? It is. But fuck you. It's not about what you want. You don't need to be moving your body to be a worthy human being or even to be healthy. What do you mean worthy? Why do they keep saying this worthy word? What does that even mean? Worthy for what? Death at like 24? You know, we fought for so long. You know, we, we fought for so long to have good health care, right? I mean, we, there was world wars. There was like genocide. There was plague. And we got here to this beautiful destination, right? And now we're fighting to take it all away for for some double cheeseburgers? I can't much what happened. And so people might say, but what You sound crazy. That sounds like some crazy ass statement that you just said right there. All the things you just said in this video are crazy. But you got nice hair. But you got nice glasses. And I like that little thing you got back here. These two little globe thingies. I like those. And so people might say, but what if yeah. the fat person that I love yeah. doesn't like being fat yeah, yeah, and yeah. is trying to lose weight? Well, Here when we should I help them then? Don't. Should I say, oh, this diet is really good? Yeah. And, and So the question is, what if the person that you're with or somebody that you want to help, presumably friend, family member, so-and-so, actually doesn't want to be fat anymore and you maybe have some expertise in this particular area where you can assist them on losing weight through diet and exercise what do you then do if that person is actively seeking help from you that's the question let's see what they say let's Should see what I fierce say, fatty oh, this says diet is really good and and um you could you can do it you can lose weight well in this circumstance yeah okay you shouldn't mind your damn bitch. Oh, oh, I, oh, I, I was not a thing. That's, that's crazy. That came out of nowhere. I couldn't believe. I can't believe that. So you're telling me, you're telling me. So you're telling me. Okay, hold on now. Oh, my bad. Um, I think I might have had aneurysm at the fact that this woman is saying some crazy shit right now. My bad. What if you were working at like an establishment that helped people get out of drug addiction, right? Like it was a place that you went to and they were like, we're going to help you not be drug addicted anymore. And a guy comes up to you and he's like, yeah, you know, I, I just, I've been doing crack like all day. I, I just been, I, I crack all day, every day. I eat it. I ingest it, whatever. I just need help getting out of this crack addiction. You go, I know this. That's awesome. That's so great. That's so great that you came here. And this establishment is specifically designed for that, but sorry, um, I can't do that because I'm gonna mind my own business because it's not about that. Even though you're looking for help, it's not help. You're you're fine. You're good. You're actually okay. You're just a drug person. That's just what it is. I'm not a drug person. I'm healthy. <laughs> but you, you're just a drug person. It's okay. Leave. Get away. We don't we don't need you here. Even though this establishment is specifically dedicated to that. 
mind your own business. What are you doing? Helping out a family member that's asking you for help? Get the fuck out of there. Mind your own business. It's not about helping that person. You're not helping them. You're not, they're just fat. That's just what it is. Have you ever heard some straight up blasphemy like this, bro? Can you imagine somebody saying like, what if I have a family member that's actively seeking help and you go, don't, don't help them. Oh, damn. Is that so just like that, huh? Just like that. Oh, okay. Damn. Business. And how is it none of my business? First of all, I think this woman might be mentally challenged because the entire idea here, all those other scenarios might be mind your own business. I mean, not doctors, because you're going to a fucking doctor. So you would expect that doctor to have an opinion. But if a family member or somebody in your friends and family comes up to you and goes, hey, I need help. And you tell them to mind their own business. Are you fucking stupid? Because you do understand them coming to you also now makes it their business, right? By definition. By, 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 by definition, it makes them now your 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 business because they made their business your business by introducing it to them so oh, oh. <coughs> it's crazy that's awesome that's awesome um can't even make sense in your own video i mean granted you did contradict yourself like four or five times this video and this is probably like the fifth or sixth one and even though this this woman i feel like it's coming from a good place <sighs> It's not good. It's terrible advice. It's terrible. Don't listen to this woman. This woman is literally telling you that if you help your own family members, don't do it, even though it's bad for them. Comes to um, if you have a fat person in your life who is like um, fat and doesn't want to be fat, and if they don't talk to you about this subject, but they're talking to me about it because you just made you just told me that they're talking. Like if they come up to me and they go, "Hey, bro, I need some help." So they're already talking to me. So this statement already doesn't make sense. But go off, Queen. Fat and doesn't want to be fat. And if they don't talk to you about this subject and they're they're losing weight on a diet or whatever and they don't bring this subject up, you also shouldn't be like, hey, you sh don't be on a diet. They don't work. Uh, you should just love your body unless they bring up the subject, right? Just let them do what they want to do. And it's, it's, it's okay. This is probably the best solid piece of advice. Definitely. This one, I can't really even critique, but you just told me that so nobody should ever talk to anybody about anything because it might offend them in some way ever. <sighs> can't win. Can't win, dude. I just like all the fundamental things that I've been taught growing up and even in my adulthood, I just I guess I was wrong about all of them because fierce fatty tells me I'm wrong. You can model your own positive behavior by not dieting. Not dieting, yeah. Your fat body, or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so did they come and ask you for advice? Yeah. No? Then mind your damn business. Oh, oh, mind your own business. <laughs> it's your husband, your wife. No, nah, mind your own business. It's not about them. It's not about them, okay? Stop it. Right? So the reason why it's so important for people to mind their business when it comes to fat people's bodies and presuming they know. What if it's like, can we, can we change up the circumstance a little bit? What if like, for instance, right? Let's say you're like somebody's wife, somebody's husband, and let's say hypothetically you're the husband and your wife gets a diagnosis at, at a clinic and they go, you know, uh, yeah, you got cancer. It sucks, not good, but guess what? The great thing about this is that even though you do have cancer, it's actually really treatable and you could probably just get it done. Like you could probably get it out in like literally this week. We can probably book you for surgery, cut it out, you'll be fine. And the your wife goes, nah, <sighs> No, um, I'm going to go home and I'm going to watch Real Housewives. Um, okay, bye. And then you're just going to sit there and go like, I got to mind my own business. So as my wife uh, is like, whatever she, she ain't, she's not putting me in my, her business. So I'm not going to interfere. Oh, she could die if she doesn't get this surgery and it can literally turn into like some, some type four or whatever cancer. Yeah, but, uh, I don't know. It's just a girl on TikTok told me that I can't really interfere with this, not my business, so I know she's my wife, I know, but no, I'm not going to convince her, no, no, I'm not, I'm sorry, what do you want me to do, it's not, it's not my fucking, it's my, not my business, it's her business, dumb, dumb, dumb. With the health status of someone that they love because they have seen what food they eat, they have seen their body size, they have seen um, whether they exercise or how much they exercise or whatever, is you are actively harming them oh okay oh. you care about their you care about their well-being you uh -huh. care about their health well then you need to educate yourself 
on what fat phobia, shame, and s- stigma does to fat people. Yeah, but what about the weight, though? But what about the problem with the weight? But what about all the issues you're gonna have with the weight? What about the bad eating habits? What about the lack of exercise? What about all the traumas and tribulations that you're gonna go through while being fat? Don't talk about it. I have to educate myself on fat phobia while they're actively suffering. Dude, what are you talking about? What are you supposed to even do? You can't do anything. It is so damaging. Your brain must be damaged if you're gonna. Say- <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so your job is to unlearn fat phobia. <laughs> Is to understand that if you want to fight for um, a better health of someone you love, then you need to work <laughs> to dismantle uh, diet culture oh. and our culture culture's deep fear of fatness. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, marinate um, me. So if you re- coat me, coat me down with glaze me, glaze me right now. Oh, just cover my entire body. Just coat me. Coat me in the the diet culture. Coat me in the fat phobia. Oh, oh, it's good. Oh, fuck. I'm so moist. (sighs) That shit feels good. If you cared about someone in your life who's who's fat and you've decided is unhealthy or you quote unquote know that are unhealthy because they, you know, said one time, oh, I don't feel well or whatever. (laughs) Or my doctor said that. that... My doctor told me I'm going to die. My doctor told me that I'm going to die. So, like, what do you think I should do? Nothing, Cheryl. You're fine. Exactly the way you are. Really? I didn't know that. Don't say anything. Just stop talking to people about health things. This, I have this issue or whatever. Um, if you really care about their health, yeah. then you need to do work on yourself. Oh, it's just great, dude. Can you imagine somebody saying that? Like, my doctor told me I'm literally going to die. What do I do, honey? And then you go... What do you, I don't, I can't talk about that. It's not about what I want. It's about what you want. What are you talking about? Yeah, I know, but I'm looking for, what, what do you think, like, your advice? I don't have any. <laughs> I know I'm your husband, but no, nothing. I can't say anything because, like, I don't want to offend you or anything like that. I'm dying. I'm dying, Frank. I'm literally dying, okay? My life is going to be over in a few weeks, and I'm asking you, what do you think I should do? <laughs> Cheryl. I'm going to have to see this over to to Fierce Fatty. She told me to not do anything at all. So I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to play League of Legends for nine hours. And you're going to die tomorrow. Bye. That's just what it is, right? That's just what you do. Okay. Anyway. Oh, and not give them advice about how... Educate yourself on the d- d- destructiveness of fat phobia gross person to reduce their body size because you are further stigmatizing them marginalizing them shaming them and that is not good shame me harder shame me harder tell me tell me about all the terribleness of me come on keep going say it say it harder say it harder say it faster slow it down a little bit now oh yeah i like that 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 kind of feels a little bit good shame it shame me harder do it Mm. for their health yeah Obesity kills more people than malnutrition. True. For me too. So you all know. But where does Oprah even get off saying this shit, dude? Oprah has been fat her whole life. I know that's a wig. And she thinks she's so cool. Oprah's like 92. Okay, anyway. I've been on this journey for most of my life. I love Oprah so much. I really, really do. I don't know if I can take one more weight loss show, Oprah. Didn't we already do enough? in the 2000s this is an audience she's talking to about her recent weight loss she got her gurus together as usual remember when she used to do shows like this this is incredible from 320 pounds to one hot day how Ooh. did she do it remember this guy bob green i think the era of oprah and bob green that whole time where weight loss shows were so big i think oprah now looking back was one of the biggest contributors to my uh. generation's weight challenges issues today we loved her we believed everything she said and he- i didn't i didn't even watch oprah dude when i grew up oprah was on tv but i didn't watch it because i thought oprah was gay and i mean that in like the non-realistic gay way i didn't think she was actually homosexual or anything like that i meant like stupid you know i didn't think that oprah was a cool show to watch because i was like 
five or six or seven or something like that. I was watching fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, dude. I was watching Ed and Eddie. I was watching Johnny Bravo. You remember that episode of Johnny Bravo where he went on that date with the fucking deer and he was about to have sex with the deer? What the fuck was that about, right? Johnny Bravo about to have sex with a deer? I don't care what anybody says. Johnny Bravo was a hot hunk. He was a beautiful, good-looking man. Don't act like you wouldn't. You wouldn't indulge in a little bit of the Bravo. That man was suited and booted every day of his life. And those glasses? Oh, man. To die for. I didn't watch that show, though. I didn't watch any of this stuff. Man, like real TV or whatever. I watched Jerry Springer, RIP Jerry Springer, and I watched Maury Povich. But I wasn't really even watching that. I just watched it because that's what all that was on. It was mildly entertaining. But I didn't really understand the point of the show because I was so young. I didn't even know what the idea of sex was. I remember for like a good portion of my life when somebody was like, what, how do... How do like women? How do how do women get pregnant? And I just kind of thought that they just thought about it. I remember literally thinking about this one day. I was like in my bed, and I was like fucking four or five or six or something like that. And um, I remember I was just thinking about. It. I was like, how how do I remember because I had like my remote in my hand. I was like, how, how do women get pregnant? And then I thought about it for like ten seconds. I was like, oh, they probably think about getting pregnant, and then they do. Like they just get pregnant. And then I was like, wait a minute. Me thinking about it right now probably means that I'm going to get pregnant. Hold up. No, I can't be thinking about this because I'm not trying to get pregnant right now. I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to give birth. That sounds terrible. So I just started thinking about things that weren't pregnancy. I was like, oh, toilet paper, toilet paper, uh, uh, wooden, wooden shapes and, uh, uh, I don't know, like spoons, spoons, spoons. And then I stopped thinking about it. Um, thank God I didn't get pregnant that day. I was like fucking six years old. Can you imagine me being a, a mother? I couldn't do it. He said, of course. Remember this book? I know some of y'all had it. We ate it all up. I don't even want Who is we, to... bro? How old is this woman? What, what were you, like, 40 when this... When Oprah? Who watched Oprah in the 2000s, bro? It had to have been women that were, like, in their 30s and 40s. How old are you? You don't look that old. What are you, like, 85? I don't know how many copies they sold. And, of course, how can we forget this when she came out? Damn, with... she looked good. Yeah, Oprah looks real good, bro. This top section, man, looks good. This bottom section kind of, ah, uh, not the best. But we're not going to hate on her. This was probably like the 80s or something like that. It's not the worst by today's standards. A lot of women nowadays actually try to dress like this now, which is really terrible. Except replace these fashionable boots with Crocs. And um, yeah, yeah, that's like, like pretty much everything. This this is like standard attire for like a lot of women nowadays. I don't, I don't back. necessarily not like and it. And this, how did she let it happen again? We were back on the yo-yo dieting with Oprah. This is my take. Find a healthcare professional, yeah. a fitness professional yeah. that you trust, okay. that is all about your health and all about your looks. Stop following these celebrities and thinking that they're God. I, I agree with this fully, dude. How many times has, I, I know a lot of guys personally that, really 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 love when they have hollywood transformation oh my god henry cavill he blows it out of the water with this new fitness room oh that one black guy that everybody wants to have sex with that everybody thinks he was please who's that one black guy michael b jordan everybody thought he was like super hot and i'll agree he he's a flavorful man <laughs> he's a good looking guy he is he's a good looking guy um if i was gay and he was also consenting i would probably suck him off if i was gay and if i was a woman if i was a woman and or gay i would do that but I might not even let that hold me back if I had the opportunity presented to me. If you are one of these people that falls like these big Hollywood celebrity fitness things, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. A lot of them um, take drugs. <coughs> a lot of them take drugs. And that's okay. They can take drugs. They can do that. They can, you know, you think Dwayne The Rock Johnson in his 50s is going to look better than he did in his 20s? Fuck you. No. He's taking drugs. And that's all right. You think John Cena, as big as he is and how muscular and how big and massive he is, taking drugs. All of it. I don't care what you say. It is what it is. They're taking drugs. They're taking things. They're on the trend baloney. They're eating some trend baloney. It's okay, though. If that's what they want to do in order to – it's just what it is. The standards to which you have to be um, in these Hollywood movies, right? Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth's a really good person to look at. Now, I don't know. This is just alleged. I don't know if this is factual. But granted, you know, all the things that I know from what I've done from all my research and, like, endocrinology and shit like that, dude – you're not gaining like 15 pounds of muscle in a month. I don't know the fuck to tell you, okay? These guys are big as fuck. And then, okay, anyway, regardless, you shouldn't be looking at these guys as like 
oh, wow, these guys look so good. I have to follow that fitness routine. Most of the time, they're just telling you the same bullshit ass shit. Oh, yeah, I just ate chicken and fucking chicken and rice and broccoli for nine months. And then I gained 40 pounds of muscle. You think that you're about to gain 40 pounds of muscle by eating chicken, broccoli and rice for nine months? No, no, no. It's okay that you ate some pizza. It's all right that you relapsed a little bit. It's all right. It's okay. You know, let's touch tips a little bit. You got foreskin, put it over my penis. I am nanoseconds away from going to bed, but I just realized that this is the very first February 29th in my whole life that I am at peace with and love my fat body. What, what is the significance of February 29th? Why is that date the, the date you have chosen to be like the date of celebration for your new love of your fat body? Like, why is this so significant compared to all the other dates? Like, what's wrong with, like, December 4th? Or, like, I don't know, dude, July 28th? Like, what's wrong with those? Like, why not any of those dates? Like, why is it this date? And I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that you're in love with your fat body, I guess. That's cool. I mean, I wouldn't be, but I'm, I'm happy for her. I'm, 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 I'm happy. I'm happy. And I thought that was really beautiful. It is beautiful. Just like you. Just like you. Beautiful. You are beautiful. It's not a music. It's not It's not a music video. Anyway, you're beautiful too. You. You're beautiful. Fantastic. Amazing person. If you like today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do any of that stuff, I would appreciate you tremendously. It helps me grow in the algorithm. So if you want to do that stuff for me, thank you. If you want to become a member of my channel, you can. If you don't want to, that's fine. I want to thank everybody that is a member. You are all amazing, beautiful, fantastic people. Every single one of you and everybody that subscribed, thank you. And also, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing because I make videos like this every single day. I've not missed a day in like a year and some change at this point. I know I have no life and it's pretty depressing that I make videos on fat people. But, you know, LeBron James plays basketball a lot. It's like the same thing, right? Like he, he does that and I do this. So that's what's what it is. Um, anyway, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now leave it down below by typing in dime d-i-m-e because because you're a dime that's right you're a dime you're a 10 you're a fantastic beautiful person you are the definition of oh, perfect beautiful specimen oh you look you look you look so good you look tasty right now. If I was a cannibal, mm, I would I wouldn't even season you. I would just mm, 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 I would just eat you up all over the place. Consensually, of course. Only if it was consensual. But I'm not a cannibal. So I would never consider eating you. I'm a well put together human being with the exception of some kinks that I have. You know what I'm talking about, dude? I mean, I like some things that maybe are a little bit far fetched, you know. I don't know. Uh, I like a woman that uh, doesn't shave her eyebrows. What's up with that? What are you going to do about that, huh? What are you going to do? Nothing. Nothing. Anyway, you're beautiful people. Everyone here, you're all beautiful. Thank you. If you made it this far in the video, you're amazing. I care about you tremendously. You smell amazing today. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter and my Discord server and my second channel. Those are all going to be linked down below in the description and the channel about me. All you got to do is click the about page on the channel and you'll see all those links and you can click on any of them. And it will take you to a beautiful land of social medias where you can click follow or uh, what do you do on Twitter? I don't know. Whatever. Or join or something. I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't matter. You're all beautiful. You're amazing. I care about you. Enjoy the rest of your day.